Yeah. Well, welcome everyone. Uh, happy uh, Vernal Equinox, uh, uh, aka the first day of spring. I seem to recall seeing this in the in the cinemas when it first came out, and I don't know how I made it through because it would have been, you know, it's still a preteen. And this was, uh, as you can see, it has an R rating, but somehow I ended up getting into the movie theater and seeing it because there was so much buzz and hype about this. And uh, of course, as you can see, that the, it's based on Stephen King's uh, novel, and uh, it's an adaptation based on that novel, a novel which uh, deals with uh, a character who has second sight. He can see into the future by shaking your hand, by you know, putting his, laying his hands upon you. And uh, he, as, as the tagline says, uh, in his mind he has the power to see the future. In his hands, he has the power to change it. Call it off. It's ridiculous. We always get on that pond until March. What the hell is the matter with you? You want to kill your own son? I'm scared, Dad. For Christ's sake, John. Don't be scared. Just go eat your please. Don't you know who I am? Of course I know who you are. You think I'd have you come into my son's life without checking you out? But I hired you for your abilities as a teacher, not as a fortune teller. Now don't give me any arguments. <laughs> the ice is gonna break! Uh, and I, I just love this. This is classic. Right, there's um, Danny Boy there, and he's got his uh, turntable. Um, and you know he's working on his uh, his uh, you know ancient computer there, but uh, and he's got his boombox right there. Isn't it? It's just classic, a classic setup from the uh, early '80s. But if you look on the wall, let, let's just have a closer look at what's happening in the background there. There's a little hint that Cronenberg gives us in the form of a poster. Seems quite innocuous uh, in the in the framing of this uh, of this scene, but it's one that gives us almost the powers of second sight, just like Christopher Walken's character has. And this is the it's, image that we're looking at. And it, it, you, well, you've seen this before. Remember her name, and it's a photographer. Sandy Scoglin. Sandy Scoglin. Oh, exactly. right. Okay. Yes. Who set up all these rooms? Yeah. Yeah. So there's something fishy about this. You can <laughs> see, right? Um, this is called the Revenge of the gold fish, and uh, this is, uh, as, as was mentioned, uh, orchestrated and photographed by a great American photographer uh, who was kind of very famous in the early 80s uh, with her conceptual approach. And uh, this is the uh, fellow that plays Gandalf uh, in, in the uh, Lord of the Rings, I believe. And that is certainly being applied to, to, the, uh, to the human body here as represented in the body of Christ. Stirring uh, Marcello, Marcello Mastriana, everything. And there's this scene where uh, he visits a, uh, a, a, rich, uh, a rich friend of his, uh, Steiner, as he's known, and they're observing and contemplating this piece of artwork in it. And uh, it's someone that I have a huge respect for, uh, uh, Giorgio Morandi. Uh, known, of course, for his very uh, particular focus on still life. I, I also sort of paid a, a, a uh, pilgrimage to Morandi. Uh, he based most of his studio practice in Bologna, and uh, still to this day, is there, there's this uh, museum and the uh, studio that he worked in. And it's, uh, it, it's a real uh, must-see if you happen to be in Bologna. This one I was just recently uh, watching, and it's, uh, uh, if we've just seen La Dolce Vita, this one is called I Dolce Ignani, which uh, loosely uh, translates as Sweet Deceptions, and it uh, stars a very young Catherine Spock, uh, spelled S-P-A-A-K, as uh, in the role of Francesca, and Christian Marquand, who's uh, showed here. Uh, in the role of Enrico. Erano amici di mia moglie e anche dopo il divorzio ho continuato a vederli, è naturale. Non c'è nessun mistero su questo. Sì, è qui. 15, 16 anni. 17. Ah, 17. Ogni età. Now interesting, he happens to say 17. It means belonging to something like that. And then in the background, 
background. Does this look like something that you may have seen? I'll give you a hint. This is an artist that used, uh, he was also an Italian painter, and he was best known for creating very imaginative portraits, portrait heads made entirely out of, out of objects such as fruit or vegetables, flowers, fish, and books. And uh, he painted these representations on canvas and arranged them in a way that really had an uncanny uh, portrait effect and really had sort of a, a real likeness to them. And in the background, you can see a, uh, a painting. And, uh, and it was done by, they gave us a, a hint, Di Giuseppe, and in this case, Giuseppe Archimbaldo, a, uh, an artist that was born in Milan in 1527. And look at how, look at how contemporary this mm -hmm. is. And yet, this is being done in the 16th century. Just really creative uh, approach to portraiture, which Archimbaldo uh, came to be known for. Here's one for all you Gregory fans. We were just talking about Dali, and uh, this is a wonderful sequence that Dali did uh, when he paired up with Alfred Hitchcock. Um, and this is a uh, cl classic Hitchcock movie, um, Spellbound, starring, of course, Gregory Tech and Ingrid Bergman. And um, and, uh, well, I think I'll roll it and uh, we'll talk a little bit about it. Let's see. I kept thinking while I was dreaming that all this meant something. That there was some other meaning in it that I ought to find out. We'll find out. I can't make out just what sort of a place it was. <laughs> gambling house. But there weren't any walls, just a lot of curtains with eyes painted on them. A man was walking around with a large pair of scissors cutting all the drapes in half. And then a girl came in with hardly anything on and started walking around the gambling room kissing everybody. She came to my table first. Did you recognize this kissing bird? She looked a little like Constance. Uh -huh. This is plain, ordinary, wishful dreaming. Go on. Well, I was sitting there playing cards with a man who had a beard. I was dealing to him. And I turned up a seven of clubs. He said, that makes 21. I win. When he turned up his cards, they were blank. Just then, the proprietor came in and accused him of cheating. The proprietor yelled, this is my place, and if I catch you cheating again, I'll fix you. I'm sorry about that kissing bug. I'm glad he didn't dream of me as an egg beater, as one of my patients did. Why, what would that mean? Never mind. Well, does it make any sense to you what I dreamed? Not yet. You were trying to tell yourself something. What it is, we'll figure out later. There's a lot more to it. Go on and try to recall the details. The more cockeyed, the better for the scientific side of it. He was leaning over the sloping roof of a high building. It was the man with the beard. I yelled at him to watch out. Then he went over, slowly, with his feet in the air. And then I saw the proprietor again, the man in the mask. He was hiding behind a tall chimney, and he had a small wheel in his hand. I saw him drop the wheel on the roof. Suddenly, I was running. Then I heard something beating over my head. It was a great pair of wings. The wings chased me and almost caught up with me when I came to the bottom of the hill. I must have escaped, I don't remember. That's all there was. I woke up and saw Dr. Prudel. Yes, of course. <laughs> Thanks. Such an intricate sequence. Isn't it beautiful to watch? Mm -hmm. It has all these deep psychoanalytical symbols in it. From the masked man, cards, wings, scissors, eyes, uh, and all these things sort of weaving together in a wonderful tapestry that's uh, 
so nicely preserved in digital.